Hey guys, Ivan here and we are about 4 weeks out from Arnold Classic 2020 and we have a lot of Arnold Classic physique updates and so we are starting with this one right here, Sergio Oliva Jr. And in the thumbnail I asked you a question, can he win the Arnold Classic? And those of you who know me know that I wasn't serious about it, of course he cannot win the Arnold Classic. It would be surprising if he cracked like top 4 and it's possible at this point. But why I said it is basically a response to Nick Strength and Power, who asked, can Josh Lenartowitz win the Arnold Classic? Of course, he cannot. I mean, short answer. I could. I, I was thinking about making a video, uh, basically responding to Nick and explaining why he cannot win. But I think it's obvious. I think everybody knows. I guess there wasn't a lot of news out there and he came up with that idea somehow. I don't know how. Josh never even said thanks. And that was a huge help for sure, I mean, as far as Josh's popularity, but can Josh really win the Arnold Classic? Hell no. Can he beat guys like William Bonek, Dexter Jackson, even, or freaking Big Ramy? <laughs> Come on, let's not even joke about it. Sure, Josh is huge, and if he gets ripped, that's gonna be amazing, but he still has a lot of loss in his physique. I don't think it's even worthy making a video about this or talking to length about it because I'm sure all of you guys who are following my channel know that he's not on that level. So he made a post actually, Josh. It's a rather lengthy text and I'm not gonna read the whole thing for you but I'm gonna tell you basically what he said and what he said is basically that he is suffering from migraines constantly due to his uh, skull surgery, tumor removal surgery and he is basically in constant pain during his prep. His neurosurgeon told him that he is going to be in pain anyways, whether he competes or not. But this means that his prep is going very hard. He is not 100% of him. He cannot push himself all the way to the max. Unfortunately, very unfortunately for him. I'm sure he will recover eventually, but is this going to be 100% of Josh Nartowitz? Because of this, I would have to say no. I mean, this is a huge factor, of course. But even if he was on his 100%, I'm guessing the best case scenario for him would be something like top 5 in this lineup. It's a, it's a good lineup. Can he win any of the Arnold Classics? I mean, no, no. Come on, Nick, what the hell are you talking about? Of course he cannot. He's a great guy, he's a great bodybuilder, but to beat some of these top bodybuilders, no. Back to Sergio Oliva. Who can place higher here, Sergio or Josh? Probably Josh, because he's bigger. But look at this, look at this victory pose. He truly is a son of his father. So <laughs> he, he looks amazing in this victory pose. Just like his father, probably better. I mean, surely better. I mean, he, he is just another level. I mean, of course, for the, for the era where Sergio Leva Sr. competed, of course, he was something special back then, but right now he wouldn't do so well. He doesn't have uh, the legs as big and he's not as conditioned as uh, his son is. So look at the conditioning here. This guy is bringing some, some serious fullness and some serious conditioning and really good shape, really good aesthetic shape. He's really bringing that old school uh, shape back into the game. Of course, if he wants to win the major shows like Arnold, he needs to be much bigger, but he has the genetics, he has the shape, he has the structure, he has everything that he needs to have. He just needs more size, basically. And hopefully that's gonna come with years, but right now I'm really impressed with this, with this um, physique update photos. And I'm actually expecting him to make a leap as far as uh, placing. I think he's going to beat some of the guys that were beating him before. And uh, I'm really optimistic about him in his future as a bodybuilder because he's making progress constantly and he seems very devoted to the sport and I think he's very ambitious and he has the muscle balance, he has the shape, the structure, the, the proportions, the symmetry. I really like what I see but when I say can he win the Arnold Classic, let's not joke about it. Of course he cannot, of course he cannot. He has amazing shape but he is not a beast of a man like Big Ramy and Bonek and Dexter, these guys are aliens. Alright, next up we have a physique update to Flex Lewis, who is also describing his prep right now and he says that he's very excited about things that are going right on. What the fuck did I just say? Okay, I wanted to, to, to erase that, but it sounds funny, so let's, let's leave it here. Sometimes I like to keep the bloopers in here, so if you guys like it, tell me down below. Basically, uh, Flex looks amazing. Flex looks amazing and he's excited as he says 
And you can see also the comment of his coach, Neil Hill, who I think is one of the best coaches and it's really a shame that Bonac dropped him off because he wasn't devoted as much as he wanted him to be because he wasn't changing his diet very often. Why would he change something if it works? I don't know. I made a couple of videos about it and I am on Neil's side. But basically, Neil is helping Flex properly. And he says that uh, the past 17 years that Flex was working hard were all basically just for this moment when he actually transfers to the Open because that's the ultimate division. And um, we're going to see Flex in that Open division. I should make a separate video about this. I mean, telling you my opinions. How will he do? But uh, just right off the bat, I think top six is a reasonable prediction, and I think that's an amazing result for from for somebody who is transferring from two to twelve, you know, small division to the big guys. I mean, the lineup is not that deep right now, but I'm expecting it to be much deeper 2020 than it was in 2019. Surely Flex is short, but he was able to beat guys like Hardy. So can he beat Hardy again? I don't know. I can't really say. I need to see Flex first, you know, in his biggest. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how it looks like. I need to do more research and more thinking before I say something like that. But I think top six, I think that's pretty secured for him. What do you guys think? Whoa, blessing of Wadibu. Look at that back, the boogeyman. He really does have a good back. This actually reminds me of Joel Stubbs, who is probably one of the best backs in the history of the world. And yeah, Blessing is not as conditioned right here, but he's only four weeks out of Final Classic. Hopefully, he will actually get bone dry in four weeks. And that's gonna look amazing. He should definitely go for that, uh, that, that complete skinless conditioning because he has the mass, he has the roundness, the fullness. He just needs to get skinless. I mean, he needs to get really dry. But this back, this back looks really thick, really amazing. It reminds me of, as I said, Joe Stubbs, but also Ronnie Coleman, in a sense. It's really thick, the, the traps are really, really low, and really thick, really full. This guy has some potential, as far as back. From the front, not as much, but from the back, whew, this is amazing. Oops, we have a little sneak peek of Steve Lorius and Alex Cambronero. You need to go to a certain subscription website if you want to watch the whole video, you need to pay for it. But you can see that they work in their chest and look at that juicy pump they're both having. Look at that vacuum behind of Alex, really small waist. Look at this weed taper of Steve Lorius. Actually, I think I'm changing my mind. Alex Cambronero could actually be the second spot or even first, not Terence Ruffin. Look at this guy, he's making improvements every year and he really has some really good genetics. You can see Neil Hill also training with them because he's their coach, both of them. What Alex doesn't really have perfect is his legs, but they're not that bad. Overall, he's an amazing bodybuilder, I mean, classic physique bodybuilder. But I do think Steve is going to win the show. I think he's an amazing classic physique guy. I think he has the potential to become the Mr. Olympia even, but we'll see what happens. Anyways, Alex looks amazing too. He looks more conditioned at this point, but there is still four weeks to go. Evans and Topani, you can see him right here, you can see his body fat percent basically. Apparently he's training at his basement gym at home and he's doing the New York Pro. He just announced it on his Instagram account. And you can go to his Instagram account, you can go to Animal Pack YouTube channel, you can watch him prep for the show. I'm glad, I'm so glad to have him back. Hopefully he will do good, hopefully he will do great. I was a huge fan of him back when he was competing and I still am, of course. Great personality, smart guy, knows a lot about nutrition, knows a lot about training, has an amazing structure, very good genetics. I'm glad that he's back after that torn quadriceps. I watched a lot of videos from his uh, on YouTube because those videos are really popular and um, he looks much bigger right now. Of course, he's growing. Let's just wait and see. New York Pro, Evans and Topani is coming. All right, we also have somewhat of an update of Sean Roden at this point. Poor guy, poor guy had so much trouble for the past year. And right now you can see him stuffing his face with whatever he can get his hands on probably. Or maybe this is just one cheat day in the last month or a week. Who the hell knows? But does he look chubby? Yes, he does. His face doesn't look very lean. But this is not a problem for Sean. Don't be worried, guys. If this guy wants to get lean, he can do that in a matter of a couple of months and be the best conditioned guy on any stage basically in the world. He proved that to us in 2018 when he became the best bodybuilder in the world. 
we feel heat in the lineup. So that sends us a message. Right now, he looks like this. Not very impressive, but he's big. He's big, that's what's important. He can get conditioned, that's not a problem. He has a problem with the growing, but he doesn't really. I mean, he grew once, and uh, muscle memory is an amazing thing, so he can always regain his size back when he loses it. And I really, really hope to see him back on the Mr. Olympia stage in 2020. And finally, we have a physique update of Nathan Diasha. Based on the previous photo that we saw, this one looks much better, much more juicy. Look at the size of this guy, he actually looks huge now. He looks much bigger than before. Before, I just wouldn't compare him with the big guys like Rolly or Rami. But right now, I mean, just this is just one photo. You cannot be sure. This is a mirror photo. Mirror could be, you know, quote unquote, anabolic. It could be bending the truth a little. It could be making him look wider. So we don't really know. But uh, if we're gonna trust this mirror and this photo, he looks huge. He looks full. And does he have the potential to win the show? Sure, sure, he does have the potential. Is it very big? Not that big. Bigger than uh, Josh Lenartowitz, <laughs> of course. Bigger than uh, Sergio Oliva and so on, but uh, probably bigger than Patrick Moore as well. We'll see. We'll see what he does, but do I expect him to do super good? Not really, because he was a late entry, but here you can see that he looks amazing. He's very full. Will he be conditioned? Surely he will. I mean, he's always conditioned. That's not a problem for him. Will he have the fullness? That's the question. He is full right now. We'll see what he looks like in four weeks from now. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please like it. Leave the comment down below, whatever you think, whatever you wanna say. And subscribe for more content like this. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.